So confluence has changed over the past few months and you might have already noticed it. So in this video, I'm going to reveal what these big changes are to confluence that you need to know so you can lead your teams and still manage your projects effectively. If we're meeting for the first time, my name's Alvin and I'm here to help you grow your career in project management. With that said, let's dive in. So the very first big change to Confluence is how the user interface is set up with its menu. So before, you used to have a menu at the very top underneath the search bar. But now, this search bar menu that was underneath the search bar has been shifted to the left side sidebar. So that includes your For You, your Recent, your Spaces, and your Starred options, okay? And that change has basically shifted everything from the top menu, and now it has now been shifted to the left sidebar, all right? It's not that big of a significant change, but it does have an effect on how you're using the software on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the other big change is that you can now access your drafts, tasks, templates, and apps on the left side. So again, there is no more menu at the very top. You have to access it on the left sidebar. Now, the next big change is tied to your spaces. Let me show you what I mean. If I click on my start space for NPD project, you're going to see all of my pages here, right? But do you see anything different in my hierarchy here? Well, if you take a closer look here, my project overview is actually a folder. So folders is a new feature that Confluence has rolled out. And before you had to use documents and you had to nest your documents inside of other documents to make it a little bit more streamlined and more organized. But guess what? Starting over the past few months and even today, you can now use folders to organize your documents so it looks cleaner, more simplified, and you don't have to worry about where are different pages located, where are your files, where are they located, right? So now everything is really easy to find. So in my example, I have a folder for project overview, requirements documentation, risk assessments, and then I have the generic templates that Confluence already can make for you, like the decision documentation and meeting notes. To create a folder, all you have to do is click on the plus create bar. And then at the very bottom, you can click on folder. Now, if you don't have access to create a folder, that is something that you need to make sure that your admin has set up for you. To do that, go to your space here. So for me, that's NPD project. Go to the three dots, move your mouse to the option for space settings, click it, and then go to the general tab here and click on features. Make sure that you have folders checkmarked or enabled. If that's not enabled, then you're not going to be able to create and manage folders inside of your workspace. So let's go back to our Confluence page here. So again, you can now see how it's a little bit more streamlined with how your project plans are housed and stored inside of your folders. By the way, if you need help and you want to learn how to go from beginner to pro inside of Confluence, you can download my free guide to master Confluence over at alvinthepm.com forward slash tutorial guide. It's completely free because I want you to have the tools so you can use Confluence in less than one hour. So go ahead, download it at alvinthepm.com forward slash tutorial guide. Now the next big change to Confluence is when you're inside a page. So let's go to this page here. This is a project plan document, but actually let me go to a different page. So let me go to my risk assessment that I created earlier. And this is a page, but let's actually shift into edit mode. To do that, press the keyboard shortcut key for E, and then you'll move into edit mode. And before, before Confluence made any change here, you used to have 
a menu at the very top where you could format your text, insert features, and do some other kind of options to format your document. But now, to, to see that menu, you have to left click any text on your document and now the menu will appear. So again, right now it's not showing, but if I wanted to see the menu, what I have to do is I have to left click any text. It doesn't matter what text it is, just left click and select one text and then that menu will appear here. So we have text styles, bold, format text, text color, and all of the other options that you're used to seeing. But let's say that you don't like how this is a floating menu that you have to click on text in order to see it. Then at the very right here, you see this pin that says pin the toolbar at the very top. Left click it, and now the toolbar is at the top of your page. Me personally, I like to see the toolbar pinned at the very top so I don't have to think about what formatting option I need to use and so on. But if you do decide to use a floating bar where you have to left click the text, then I recommend getting really used to using the keyboard shortcut for the left slash bar. Okay, so when you do the slash bar, then a list of different shortcuts will be available to you like creating action items, inserting an image, inserting an emoji, a table, status, dates, decision, note panel, etc. Get used to using that slash key so you can easily access that shortcut menu to add in other features to your live document. All right, so with that said, let's go into this, the next big change for Confluence. So I'm going to click on update here. And I want to show you something that I don't believe Confluence had had before. And that has to do with comments. So if we go to the very bottom of our page here, we have this section for comments. I'm going to click on add a comment. And let's just say I'll type in a new comment here. So this is a new comment. And I'll click on the button for add comment. What you'll notice is that this is a new comment. But not only that, I can actually create a nested comment in this section. So let's do this. This is a nested comment. And when I click reply, you'll see that this is now a nested comment. So all comments that are responding to that same comment are showing in one section. And the reason why this is helpful is that you don't need to create different comments in response to a comment that someone else made earlier. And it's also helpful because let's say that someone made a comment five days ago, but you're having a tough time finding it and where it was earlier. Now you can just look at your at your nested comment to find exactly what you're looking for. Is that making sense? All right. Now the next big change that Confluence made is introducing a new feature that I didn't know existed before. And that is called a live page. So click on the plus create button at the very top and click on live doc. This is basically a live document that you're collaborating with in real time with the other people on your team. So let's call this live document um, meeting minutes, right? What's great about this is you can share this document with other people in your team and they can go in and automatically insert their notes it's really great for brainstorming sessions or if you need to think about, oh my gosh, something, a new issue has appeared in our timeline and we need to resolve it ASAP. This live doc feature is really great because you don't have to worry about constantly saving the page or having to publish it. It's live and anyone can access it as long as you share it with them. And it's just really easy to use on the fly. So the next big change that Confluence has made is now you can create a Jira work item directly from Confluence. Let me show you what I mean here. If we go to this page that I already created called new user stories to create, I already created a table where I inputted the summary on the left column and then description on the right column, all right? So in the summary, I put as a shopper, I want to X, Y, Z. And I did that for about three user stories. And here's something that's really cool. 
if I left click and I select this entire table, I can convert this table into Jira work items for my Jira project. But a caveat here is that I am not in edit mode. My page has already been published. So to do this, what I'm about to show you, make sure you click on update and make sure that this page that you're working on is already live. Once it's live, left click and select all the comments, all the columns and everything that's inside your table. And then you'll see this new menu appear. So let me refresh my screen here so it's so it's more concise for you. So left click and select all the information in the table. Left click the three dots here and choose the option for create Jira work items. And you'll see this appear on the right sidebar. It says create Jira work items. Project is e-commerce shopping app. And then it shows the three user stories that I want to create. But the thing is, this isn't supposed to be epics. This should be a user story. So let's go ahead and change that to story for each of them. So I'm going inside and I'm creating story here. And then I clicked on create and it created the first user story that I already showed you. And I'll rinse and repeat that for the other two user stories that we're showing on the right sidebar. So story, click on create, and then it'll work behind the scenes and create that link between Jira and Confluence. So again, left click this one right here. It's not going to be an epic. I want that to be a user story. So I'll choose user story inside the work type and then click on create. And once that's done, it will have already created these three work items. Let me click refresh because I do think that it will auto populate the new links to your Jira project. So yeah, as you can see here, when you refresh your page, Confluence will automatically link directly to your Jira project. So it says in here, ESA-89, ESA-90, and ESA-91. So let's say you're in a brainstorming session, you're meeting with a team, maybe you're brainstorming new requirements with a customer or the product owner, and you're just brainstorming live, you created this page, and you know what? You don't have to spend more time outside of your meeting to create these user stories. All you have to do is create a simple table like this, and in the same meeting, you can create the user story live. And the best part, it creates a link to your Jira project immediately. So check this out. If you left click the link, it opens up your Jira project to that new user story. How cool is that, right? So it's very, it's a very simultaneous sync between Jira and Confluence. I do think that this is probably one of the newer features that I really do like between Jira and Confluence. Now I've shared with you quite a few changes that Elastin has made to Confluence and I wanna hear from you. What do you think about these latest changes that have been made to the Confluence interface and how you're interacting with all the documents? Let me know your comments in the comment section down below. Now to learn everything you need to use Confluence to go from beginner to pro, watch this video next and I'll see you in the next video.